By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a game for you between me and Christian. And Christian is playing with a blue, black, uh, white robots deck. And I'm playing with my white Tron deck with a splash of red. As you can see, there is a plateau there. Um, that looks like a very good start from Christian, who's now playing a recall after cracking his Lotus. And he has two mana still in his mana pool. I guess two blue ones. So let's see what he can do with the cards that he found with the recall. And there is... Okay, that's nice, the Demonic Tutor. I mean, look at that graveyard from Christian. That is pretty impressive. And he's finding a land. He's playing out the land. And this is a little bit insane because he's playing with the Lotus, the Recall, and the Tutor there in his second turn. So I didn't expect this. And he's playing a Mana Vault. Playing four, playing an Icy. And there I go. So my second turn. Playing a Workshop. That's great. Four mana, playing a Suchi. So putting some pressure there on Christian. Christian, of course, having that Icy Manipulator. So he's just able to tap it. Taking a damage there from the Mana Vault. Oh, and this is great. Sage of Latinam. One of my favorite cards is from Antiquities. I believe it's 1-2. It's not a 1-1, one, one, as many people think. It's a 1-2. And you can tap it to sacrifice an artifact and then draw a card. Very useful. And there's a Swords over the Sage. I know the card very well. I've played with it as well. So I really see the importance of just removing that card. And I'm playing another Suchi. So I'm putting some pressure on the board. And there is a Blue Mox and a Copy Artifact. And this is one of the problems when I play against decks like this. Um, they, I believe they run four copies. And especially when I play out a Triskelion, I'm basically giving my opponent a fantastic target. So he's tapping down my Workshop, attacking with both, deciding to make the trade. Hitting him for 4, so he goes to 11. And passing turn, now he's on 10, so he already lost half of his life. But I only have a Suchi on the board that he can tap. And he has mana issues there. Decides, of course he needs his Icy now to, to tap down my Suchi. And I'm playing a Trike. Oh, and that's nice, a mana drain. That's a good, a good time. To play that card a good uh, good timing i mean so he now gets sec six extra mana in his mana pool so he has a total of uh 10 mana it's interesting maybe i would have used some of the mana from the mana drain to untap the mana vault and maybe he's doing that now i don't know remember we're just playing a uh, casual style so it's not like we're at this big tournament so we're very relaxed. You know, if a player says, hey, I want to do this or I want to do that, we usually say, hey, no problem. As long as it's reasonable, of course. I mean, you want to play a fair game of casual magic. But that's, um, that's Night That Brain Geyser. I always like it when players do that, when they play a Mana Drain and then the Brain Geyser. Sometimes it feels like... It, it, it feels like they... They always have that combination because they're both restricted. So, but it happens a lot though. Uh, my turn. He took over the Triskelion there with the anime debt. So, that's basically what you see in this deck. I think four copy artifacts and four anime debts. And then you kill your own trikes when somebody plays a sword so you can animate them later. But I play with Relic Barriers, so that's going to be a very good weapon for me. And I'm playing a Winter Orb. And am I going to attack now? I think I should, actually. Yeah, and I do. Shooting me for three. And chum blocking the Trike. So this is perfect. I mean, remember... Um, Christian only has nine lives left, so he has to be careful there. Only gets to untap one land, decides to untap his strip mine, taking the damage from that vault, 
And that vault has actually done him quite a lot of damage. It's like the damage you kind of forget, but it does count. Playing a Mishra's Factory, so that's a blocker. Of course, also has mana left from the Icy. And I want to tap the Orb, but I hope I'm going to tap that Icy Manipulator. And I'm not. Okay, interesting. I think that would have been the better choice, to be honest, is tapping that Icy and then forcing him to or use his Icy or not. Either way, it's fine. And then I can attack with the Suichi. I mean, he's on 8, and what I have to do right now in the game is just put, keep the pressure on Christian so he has to make unfavorable trades, unfavorable blocks, and so forth. But I'm not doing it. Maybe I have something in hand. Who knows? And he's using his strip mine on the workshop. And I think I made a mistake there because I assumed I had six mana to, uh, to play with, but I don't. So basically, I'm giving Christian an extra turn. And that's dangerous when you're playing like decks against decks like this. Interesting, twiddling because he wants his mana so bad, he wants to untap his vault. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, he decides not to. He decides not to. Okay, so he's, he's twiddled my Winter Orb. So that gives, him, um, that gives him the ability to untap his lands. And now he has to choose what am I going to do with the lands. And he's taken the damage again from the Mana Vault. So I thought he was going to untap it there with the land, but he chooses not to. Uh, drawing for turn. So in his upkeep, I decide to tap his Icy. And he's got quite some mana now, so I'm sure there's something coming in. There is a Suchi on his side. Now, of course, I can tap the Suchi next turn and get in for three. I'm sure that's what I'm going to do. Tapping the Suchi, getting in for four, I mean. So he's going to three, three life left. And I think Christian's in trouble here. And there it is. I got Tron activated and I kill him with the Triskelion. And this is exactly what you want to do when you're playing Tron. This boom, having the Tron getting that land, putting a trike out, killing your opponent. Very interesting first game. Let's see what happens after sideboarding in game number two. Game number two with Christian on the play. Looks like we're still shuffling here. Interesting to see the choices that he's going to make. I think I'll probably board in a lot of artifact hate there, so... That's probably what I'm going to do. And of course, sport in an extra Presence of the Master. I play with one Presence of the Master main deck. And I've got an extra one in my sideboard. And I'd love to play out those Presence against um, his copy artifacts. But look at the start here from Christian. And uh, he's got some interesting moxes there, by the way. Oh, more, even more altered cards there. But look at that amazing start here. What is he doing? So he plays a Recall. He plays a Mox Ruby. Then after that, he plays a Soul Ring. And he still has some mana left. Very explosive first turn from Christian, but not a real threat on the board. I play a Soul Ring, which is not too shabby. And the Chaos Orb. Okay, that's pretty good. But I can't activate it, so maybe Christian can remove it somehow. He's also playing with White, of course. I'm sure he has four Disenchant, especially after sideboarding. And... There is a uh, Suchi, and I've been told that Suchi actually means 4-4 four, four in Mandarin. And there is a Mana Drain. Ooh, and that's bad news for me. He's got four extra mana. Look at the amount of mana he has. And if he now, if he has a Disenchant and just Disenchants away my Orb, that would be a great move as well. But obviously I don't know what he has in hand, so we'll see. He's He's not sure what to do with the 4 mana. Okay, he uses it, and he plays a trike. So now I'm facing a Suchi and a trike, and we're on turn 3. So this is how fast it can go in old school magic with all the extra mana ramping. Uh, but I've got 5 mana here, and I've got a Chaos Orb I can use. What do I do? I'm just passing turn, okay. 
I have two plateaus, so I have access to... Okay, I'm gonna, gonna flip. This is a little complicated because I'm not sure what I'm flipping on. Okay, I'm flipping on the Suchi, so Suchi's gone. So am I going to take four, or do I have like a Swords or something else? And it looks like we're discussing what would have been the better option, killing the Triskelion or killing the Suchi. Obviously, I knew if I would flip on the Triskelion, he would do me three more damage. So that's probably my reasoning here. And there it is. Bam. This is from the sideboard. I think I put four in. And the great thing is it also gives me life. So... It's going to get rid of an artifact creature here in this case, I'm sure. And it's going to get rid of life. And I, th I hope... Oh, I have chosen to trike, and I think that's a mistake. Because what he does, he shoots two on me, and then kills... No, he doesn't... This is a very nice play. He plays a recall. So he gets to keep his strike as well. I wanted to say I should have targeted the, um, the Suchi because the Suchi cannot kill itself. So at least it would, would have given me four life. But this is a great play from Christian. Very cool. And I really like Hercules Recall so much because you can use it as a defensive spell, but also as you saw, uh, or, or also as an offensive spell. And as you saw here, this was used in a defensive way and it worked wonderful. So instead of solving a problem, um, I've, I just lost resources here. And it's going to be very difficult for me to win this. I'm on 9 life, Christian, still on 20. I'm going to 5 here. Of course, the trike's coming back. You know that. So even if I... Oh, and there's a copy on the trike and I'm dead. So this is definitely a trike kind of match. Um, the first game I won, finished with the trike, I should say. And the second one, Christian is finishing with a double Triskelion. Well done. Let's go on to game number 3. Game number three. So this is the decisive game to see who wins the match. I'm on the play. And I think it's going to be difficult. I think I boarded in a lot of artifact hate. Um, and like I said before, the extra presence of the master. If I can get the presence of the master on the board quickly so that he cannot play out any copy artifacts, I think that's key for this matchup. There I go. I'm starting with a strip mine and it's a very interesting looking library of alexandria that's a very yeah that's 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 an altar in a way that it's hard to recognize the card actually i'm thinking now should i strip the library or not and i should strip the library but i don't i play a chaos orb so this surprises me because now i'm giving my opponent some card advantage and as you can see, what he did is end of turn, he drew an extra card and he, he didn't tap. And he's playing a time walk, taking an extra turn, drawing an extra card, drawing a card. And this is the problem with Library of Alexandria. Before you know it, your opponent has drawn like so many cards from it. So when you see it, remove it. And I should have done that in the first place. Instead, I chose to play out the Chaos Orb, which is now removed by the Disenchant, making my pl play even worse than it already was. Uh, luckily, I have a Mox here to at least have some access to land, to mana, I should say, on the board. In the meanwhile, Christian is continuing, and what he's doing is Sage of Latinam, so there is that Antiquities creature again that he can tap to second artifact. I need to get rid of this Sage ASAP. And it looks like I can't. I'm just playing a Maze of If, passing turn, end of turn. Christian is playing a Recall, drunk three extra cards. And this is not looking good for me. Oh, yes, a Tudor. Great. So now I'm down and he's kicking me while I'm down, which is not great. Playing a Time Vault. And, oh, this is interesting. We're basically doing it at the same time. It's a good thing we're playing casual, um, because in this case, I guess we discussed, okay, I'm playing, you're playing the Twiddle, and in response, I'm disenchanting it. But look what he did with the Sage. So I'm disenchanting an artifact, but he's activating a Sage, actually getting a card in return. So for him, this is card advantage. Playing a Winter Orb now, which I think is nicely timed, because 
you kind of want to slow down the game at this moment because Christian's going very fast. He definitely has momentum here. So I need to slow him down. And it's working because he's not playing anything except for the mocks. But what can I do? Asking for his... How many cards he has. And he's tapping my Winter Orb with the Twiddle. Twiddle is such a versatile card. I've played against it a lot of times. And I'm surprised every time in, in how many different ways you can use this card. And he's playing out the Suchi, playing a copy artifact, I guess, on the Suchi. And in response, I am removing the Suchi. Again, he's drawing a card from that... Um, from the Sage of Ladnam, and in this case, it gives him four mana. And with the four mana, he's playing out the IC Manipulator. And I believe he's then targeting the IC Manipulator. I'm not sure if he did that. I'm not even sure if that's possible. So if you know the ruling, please let me know. Because I believe the copy artifact was already cast, so he had to choose a target that was on the board at that time, and the IC wasn't on the board yet. Um, if you know, uh, please leave a reply. And I'm playing a Presence of the Master. So that's great for me, making sure that Christian cannot play out any more copy artifacts for now. But I'm already so far behind. This is going to be very, very difficult. I need to find a way to, to destroy those ICs. I need... To, oh yes, of course, there's a Triskelion. It's a 4-4. This is a big problem. I'm curious if I can... Fight my way back into this game. I doubt it. Playing a Suchi to have a blocker. Um, he's tapping down my Winter Orb. So that means he's untapping all his lands. I do have that maze, of course. So I can send something back. So that's probably going to buy me some time. But that's what it does. A maze buys you some time. It doesn't solve your problems. And there's the attack for six, and I'm going to send back to Trike, obviously. And I'm taking two, so I'm going to 18. It's actually the first damage so far in this game. Another Suchi. And the problems are just piling up for me. What can I do? And I'm very land light as well. I only have three lands there. I don't have Tron. Because of the Sol Ring and the Mox, at least I have access to some mana. But I'm just passing turn, and that's poverty. When you're behind and you have to pass turn in a board state like this, that's not great. I think I'm giving myself a 10% chance of coming back in this game. I need a balance, I guess. Sending back the Suchi, taking 6. Now he can pump it up with the other factory, taking 7 damage here. Going from 18 to 11, and now it's starting to really hurt. I'm a little bit in the tank here, trying to find a way out. And I'm actually just playing a Howling Mine. Because I'm losing at the moment, so why not? If, if the board state stays, stays the same, I lose. So why not play a second Howling Mine, hoping that my opponent will hit lands or useless cards or enchantments that he cannot play out. And hopefully I can find uh, a balance or some other quality removal here. And there's the other Mox. So he has a lot of uh, altars, as you can see. I like it when it's, when it's in a set like this, you know, when all your Mox are, are altered. My, my Mox actually has some writing on it from a, uh, a drunken Italian. It's, it says something in the lines of, this Mox is mine. But I'm, I, I don't know the full story. Um, tapping here, tapping six, probably playing a trike, exactly. So we kind of have the same creatures, but my opponent has the Sage, and he has um, two Icy Manipulators, I think. or. Or does he? No, he doesn't. He has a mox. So he did copy the mox back then, well, earlier in the game. So I was mistaken there. Um, so anyhow, he has one IC, which is more than enough. Playing a disenchant, there are so many targets for him to choose from. 
and he's choosing to trike. I'm hitting him for for two, I think, or th oh, I'm trying to kill the sage. And I'm successful, and as a response, he's sacking a mox, drawing another card. So, I mean, he's drawn so many cards from that sage. It's crazy. And there he goes, tapping his moxen. Counting his cards. I mean, he is winning, but he probably wants to find the quickest way to win. Because I really don't, don't see me coming back from, from this position. Obviously, I try. There's a twiddle. Oh, of course, twiddling my mace. And again, we see another way of working with that twiddle. And in this case, it means four extra damage. And that's the end. That's the end of the game. He, he can deal 10 damage. <laughs> I'm showing some cards that I can play. He can deal me 10 damage and I'm on one. And then he can shoot me down with the Triskelion with those three counters. So well done, Christian. You win this one. One to two. The match goes to robots. So thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see some more old school games, you can click on the link that's appearing right now. Once again, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. <laughs>